I'm Will Beecham, ISIS Chemical Business Deputy Editor. I'm here with Stephen Elliott, the Chief Executive of the Chemical Industry Association, the UK's trade body. Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi. I wonder if you could just start by um, giving me your thoughts on the outlook for the UK chemical sector for this year? Sure. Um, I think this year we're pretty optimistic. Um, we're looking at growth in terms of production of about 2.5%. That's on the back of 4% last year. Um, so the, 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 the data is, is pretty strong looking out. Our survey of members we've surveyed um, for the last quarter. So anecdotally, it's very strong in terms of the forward look, in terms of commitment for um, R&D spend, capital expenditure and expenditure on people. Um, and maybe the other thing to, to add as well is that the most recent trade data for the UK um, is showing a real boost in exports and 60% of that boost is chemicals. So uh, we're, in a, we're in a pretty good place at the moment. Um, could you give any, any sort of the, the causes of that? How about the, um, the falling oil price? Has that improved the um, productivity or the competitiveness of the sector here? Absolutely. I mean, given where you are, you know, in the chemical supply chain, there'll be some winners and some, you know, certainly people not winning from the oil price um, uh, change. But overall, it's beneficial. So that's really, I think, helped performance. I think a couple of other things have helped. Um, Domestic demand has certainly picked up, reflecting the growth in the UK economy. I mean, we're looking to grow by a similar 2.5% this year, I think. Germany remains strong as our main export market as well. So I think there's a, there's a combination of factors, but the oil price has really, has really overall helped. Right, great. Um, c- can you pick out any big challenges that face the sector longer term? Yeah, I think um, we're probably now um, the healthiest um, chemical economy, if you like, in a European context. So that's great, and it looks very positive, again, as I said, going forward. But the issue is is, is beyond the European shores, really, and uh, and we still face a huge competitive threat from you know, a United States economy that's, uh, for chemicals, really been driven by uh, by the shale gas exploitation, as well as the ongoing challenge that presents itself in the Gulf and the, and, and the Far East. So I think, you know, for us, it's recognising the external world outside Europe and as quickly as we can, in our case, moving to, 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 to tackle that and compete. And for us, that's about exploiting shale gas as, as quickly as we can to make our feedstock competitive. And are you, are you uh, sort of optimistic that the import of US shale could have a, a good impact on the supply chains over here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that, that's the first positive signal, the good work at Wilton and, and at Grangemouth, um, to, to, to import the, uh, the, you know, the competitive ethane. Um, the steps beyond that are about domestic exploitation. We've got some very important decisions to be taken at, at local level in the UK in the, in the coming days and weeks. And I think if we do that, I think the signal of intent with importing and then the potential for domestic exploitation, that I think both of those things act as a very powerful signal to, well, maybe the UK is strengthening and potentially rebuilding its supply chains, an opportunity to bring, to bring back and, and, and create new manufacturing in chemicals in the UK. Great. And just finally, um, we've got this referendum to look forward to in the UK. Anything that the CIA, have you got a stance on it yet or anything you can say personally about um, this referendum? And uh... Yeah, I think, I think the, the first thing to say is that um, for, for, for the chemical industry, this is about you know, what, what, does, what does the business agenda look like and what are the pros and cons with regard to the business agenda for chemical businesses operating, trading from and investing in, in the UK from that referendum. So the specific questions that are being posed by the Prime Minister are perhaps less relevant to chemical businesses, but we are going to ask our businesses what's important to them and what are the top two or three things that are really crucial for them. Um, And we ask those questions now, and then once the Prime Minister is clearer about the potential for reform or change and comes back to talk to the government and the people, that's a similar time for us to ask those questions again of our members because they may be more relevant or they may not be again. But it's, there's a sort of here and now and a then questioning of our membership. Once we've got that, we'll then take a view on, right, so do we say something here in terms of a yes or no? Um, do we reflect the majority view? And most importantly as well, you know, when do we say it as well? But for okay. now, it's a, it's a sort of research piece with our membership. And, and on your, your, your view personally, if, if we were to exit the EU? My personal view, uh, and I stress that, is that we should stay. I think, you know, 50-something percent of our exports go to continental Europe. Um, Germany remains our largest trading partner. 
um, I think unraveling all of the existing um, ties that we have, in our case unraveling potentially uh, you know, trade deals, so we have to negotiate our own, becoming a Norway, but still you know, having to largely accept what comes from Brussels but have very little say in its design, all of those things, for me personally, make, um, make a yes decision um, the one to take. Thanks very much, Steve. Thank you.